Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we are going to work on momentum. Uh, a couple of multiple choice questions. So let's jump straight into the paper and see the solutions. Number one, it says that a table tennis ball of mass 3 grams is fired with a speed of 10 meters per second from a stationary toy gun of mass 0.6 kilograms. The gun and the ball are an isolated system. What are the recoil speed of the toy gun and the total momentum of the system immediately after the gun is fired? So what do we have here? Let's work first with the total momentum of the system. Initially, the gun and the ball, they are stationary, nothing is moving. So momentum is zero. So after the firing, momentum has to be conserved. It's an isolated system. So definitely it can be either A, either C. So your, your total momentum has to be zero. Now, what is happening with the recoil speed of the toy gun? In order to solve that, of course, you have to solve for the conservation of momentum. So initial momentum it will be equal with the final one. So what do you have? Initially, you have zero momentum. Finally, you have the mass of the gun and the velocity of the gun minus the mass of the ball and the velocity of the ball. Minus because they move in the opposite directions. So the direction of velocity it has to be opposite. So from here, this is what you're looking for, for the velocity of the gun. So you need to solve this formula for V, for the capital V, the velocity of the gun. So you have M times U divided by capital M. And from here, you have to substitute the numbers, of course, in the uh, specific units that they will give us the answer. So you have 0 0.003 kilograms times 10 meters per second for the ball divided by 0 0.6 kilograms. So from here, you have 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.6. So this, of course, it will give you a 0 0.05 meters per second. So either A, either B, correct answer, of course, here it's A. The number two, the graph shows the variation of momentum with time for an object. What, the, what net force acts on the object for the first two seconds and for the second two seconds of the motion? So we see here that uh, from the second two seconds, okay, so from two to four, you see that you have no change in momentum. So based on Newton's second law, that it tells you that, the force acting is the, change, is the rate of change of momentum. If this is zero, you have no change, then of course this is going to be zero as well. For the second two seconds, it's going to be either A, either D. Now what is happening in the first two seconds? In order to do that here, based again on Newton's second law, we have to solve this part. So it's actually the gradient of this line from zero to two seconds. So what do you have? P final it's 20, P initial it's zero. T final is 2, T initial is 0. So you have 20 minus 0 divided by 2 minus 0. If you do the math here, you're going to have the number 10. Of course, it's Newton here. So either A, either C, correct answer here is A. Number 3. A ball of mass M collides with a wall and bounces back in a straight line. The ball loses 75% of the initial energy during the collision. The speed before the collision is V. What is the magnitude of the impulse on the ball by the wall? So what are we trying to find here? We're trying to find the impulse. An impulse is the change of momentum. The change of momentum, of course, is going to be the P final minus the P initial. So now in order to do that, we need to know the velocity before and after the collision. We know before the collision is V. What is happening, though, after the collision? In order to do that, we have to Check what is happening with the energy. Okay, it says that 75% is lost of the initial energy. So that means that the final energy, it will be the 25% of the initial energy. And now based on that, we have to solve for the new velocity. So mv prime is the new velocity, let's say. And this is 25 over 100, it's 1 over 4 times 1 over 2 mass of the ball m times v, the velocity before the collision. Of course, from here, these are cancelled out, 
and you need to solve here for v prime so you need to take the square the square root of it so you're going to have 1 over 2 times v here is also square so you see that the momentum the velocity after the collision is half the velocity before the collision so i'm going to apply this one here and i have m times v prime minus of course you have m times the v before the collision but here also you see that the ball is going to move in this direction initially and then in the other direction so definitely here you have to have the opposite direction for velocity now it doesn't matter which one you take positive and negative the result is going to be the same again so from here what you need to do is to keep solving this one i'm going to replace the v prime with a with a relationship of the old velocity so you have m times 1 over 2 v plus m times v and from here of course if you do the math it's going to give you 3 over 2 mass times the velocity and of course correct answer here is d number four child x throws a ball to child y the system consists of the ball the children and the earth what is true for the system when the ball has been caught by the child y and we have the momentum of child y is equal and opposite to the momentum of child x the speed of rotation of the earth will have changed the ball has no net momentum while is it in the air and the total momentum of the system has not changed and of course here your correct answer is d because momentum is always conserved number five we have an object that is moving in a straight line a force f and a resistive force f act on the object along the straight line both forces act for a time t what is the rate of change of momentum with time of the object during time t so we're asking to find the rate of change of momentum so it's delta p over delta t and of course we know from newton's second law that this is the net force that is acting on the object and net force of course you see that it's the one force minus the other force so it's f minus f so correct answer here is b number six the graph shows the variation with time t of the force f acting on an object of mass 50,000 kilograms the object is at rest at t equals zero what is the speed of the object when t is 30 second so we need to find the speed here at this moment so that, that is the final speed because we have a force against times graph we can work again with newton's second law so the force is the change of momentum over the change of time and from here we can solve for the change of momentum so it's force times the time now the change of momentum it's mv final minus mv initial initially you know this is zero because the object is at rest at zero seconds and of course this is going to be equal with the force times the time and from here what do we have we have mv final the v final is the one that we're looking for equals to force times the change of time so now here because we don't have a constant force you see the force is changing the time of course is changing as well we cannot just pick one of the points in order to calculate the final so what we have to do is to calculate the area under the graph so this part is the area under the graph so it's a triangle so it's 1 over 2 times the maximum force here times 6 times the maximum time here times 30 and now from here what do you have you have m times vf is equal is equal to 90 but here you have to be careful because your units are kilo newtons so here you have also the 10 times the power of 3 so from here i'm gonna solve for vf so it's gonna be 90,000 divided by the mass of the object the mass is 15,000 kilograms so you see that you have an answer of 6 meters per second so correct answer here is b number seven a ball of mass m is thrown with an initial speed of u and an angle theta to the horizontal as shown 
Q is the highest point of the motion. A resistance is negligible. What is the momentum of the ball at Q? So you know here at the highest point of the trajectory, you have only horizontal spin. So the momentum, of course, here is going to be the mass times the horizontal speed. And horizontal speed is, of course, the initial speed times the cosine of theta. So correct answer here is B. Number eight. A stopper of mass 8 grams leaves the opening of a container that contains pressurized gas. So the stopper accelerates from rest for a time of 16 milliseconds and leaves the container at a speed of 20 meters per second. What is the order of magnitude of the force acting on the stopper? Again here, we have to work with Newton's second law, delta P over delta T, and we want to solve for the force. Now, the change of momentum is only n times v final because n times v initial is zero because accelerates from rest divided by the time, of course. So from here, what we have, we have 8 grams, that is 8 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilograms, times 20 meters per second divided by 16 times 10 to the power of negative 3 because it's milliseconds. So from here, these are cancelled out, and if you do the math here, you have 160 divided by 16, so it gives you the number of 10 newtons. So of course, it's C. Number 9. A ball of mass M collides with a vertical wall with an initial horizontal speed U and rebounds with a horizontal speed V. The graph shows the variation of the speed of the ball with time. What is the magnitude of the mean net force on the ball during the collision? So we're looking for net force again here. Of course, we're going to work again with a Newton's second law formula, delta P over delta T. So what is the delta P and what is the delta T? Of course, it's a change in momentum. P final minus P initial. And for the time, we have T final minus T initial. And what are they? P final, we have the mass of the object times the velocity of the object. You see it's V from the diagram. Minus P initial, it is the mass of the object times the U speed, because this is what has initial. Now, also we know that it rebounds on a wall. So that means that it's going to have to move to the opposite direction. So one of these velocities, it needs to be negative. And the time, you see, the final time is T2, and the initial time is T1. So it's T2 minus T1. And if you rearrange a little bit here, you're going to have m v plus u divided by t2 minus t1. And of course, this is your correct answer, d. Now, number 10. You have a moving system that undergoes an explosion. What is correct for the momentum of the system and the kinetic energy of the system when they are compared immediately before and after the explosion? So let's see what we have here. Here we have an object that it's moving, so it has kinetic energy initially, and then it explodes. So the individual parts, they will move in different directions with another kinetic energy. It's one of them. Now momentum, of course, it has to be conserved. Conserved. There is nothing else that we can do. Now what is happening about the kinetic energy? Now it's difficult to understand here because we have a moving object. So initially you have kinetic energy. So you cannot say if the kinetic energy is increasing or conserved yet. But what you have to think about is that the energy is not created or destroyed. So the chemical, the potential energy of the system, like a gunpowder or whatever it is in order to make it explode, is converted to kinetic energy after. So what do you have? The total energy initial, it needs to be equal with the total energy final. And what do we have initial? We have the kinetic energy initial of the object plus the potential energy of the object that it's going to create the explosion. And finally, you have only the kinetic energy of the individual parts, all of them together, of course. So now you see here that this must be equal with all of that. But here you have two terms, here you have one term, so definitely the kinetic energy initially it needs to be smaller than the kinetic energy finally. 
So of course the kinetic energy is going to increase. So correct answer here is A. And number 11. An, el an inelastic collision occurs between two bodies in the absence of external forces. What must be true about the total momentum of the two bodies and the total kinetic energy of the two bodies during this interaction? So, first of all, momentum is conserved, always. It doesn't matter what kind of collision we have. Here we have inelastic collision. Inelastic collision means that kinetic energy is not conserved because we have losses of energy. So, out of all of these choices, only the A is the correct because we have only momentum is conserved, kinetic energy is not. So, that was for today, guys. Uh, I hope you can understand this topic. It's not super hard, but uh, you need to practice. So, study hard and good luck.